China just shocked American scientists with this. For more than a quarter of China and Magnolia, the Gobi Desert has asserted its role for centuries. The Gobi Desert has always been difficult to handle, being the world's fourth and largest desert in Asia. Recently, China has come up with ways to tackle the issue of desertification. So what did the Chinese government do that shocked American scientists? Stay tuned to find out. In this video, we will discuss the effect of the Gobi Desert on the economy, trade, and climate of China and how China was able to overcome the issue. As we are all aware, the Chinese government has been making progress in the economy and there is no stopping and slowing the researchers there. The ways to reduce desertification have been successful with positive outcomes. Let's find out what methods are currently being used in the area. Desertification has been a problem for China forever. The Gobi Desert, found in northern China, occupies 2.3 million kilometers or 30% of the total area of the nation. The desert is recognized to have an impact on regional and worldwide climate due to its size, and in return, global climate change also has an impact on the desert. The Gobi Desert is one of the most difficult ecosystems to comprehend and manage because of the intricate relationships between the elements that are important in the desert's development and the ongoing climate change. The main issues going on in the desert are overgrazing, aerosols, and desertification. Three significant deserts surround the northwest Chinese region of Ningxia Huai Autonomous Region. It has battled desertification for more than 60 years. 2.97 million hectares, or 57% of its land, experienced desertification in 2010. Farmland and villages could be destroyed by the advancing desert, which would force people to leave their homes. An $80 million World Bank Finance Initiative has been assisting with desertification management, restoring natural vegetation, and implementing other ecological protection measures since 2012 in seven counties and cities in Ningxia. Issue of Aero Soiling One significant effect is topsoil transfer by wind erosion, which renders millions of tons of fertile topsoil unusable, also known as the dune effect. Organic matter in topsoils is steadily disappearing, and areas with a high salt concentration are frequently developed. In addition to these effects, studies reveal that Gobi Desert is a climate hotspot, with climate change accelerating relative to the rest of mainland China. The Gobi Desert has major transborder effects in the form of dust storms that have significant impact on large parts of Northeast Asia, including Japan, North and South Korea, and even certain areas in the Pacific Ocean. It is well known that frequent dust storms have a significant negative economic impact in these areas. To combat this issue, the native Chinese have been using the star checkerboard method for centuries. This method is used to fix dunes, a checkerboard-shaped arrangement of straw made from wheat, rice, reeds, and other plants is created. The other half is uncovered and the first part is buried. However, a recent innovation has been made to this old method, a straw checkerboard sand fence constructed from brush net rope. The traditional straw checkerboard system, which has been employed for more than 50 years to combat desertification, will be replaced with new technology. According to experience, the straw checkerboard sand barrier approach is currently the most practical, environmentally friendly, and economically viable strategy to combat desertification, according to Zhang Zizhen, deputy chief of the Shaputu Research Center. The Study Institute has also discovered that by introducing artificial flora, it is possible to restore the ecology in the northern Chinese desert. Currently, Shabato has a 60-meter belt for wind protection and sand fixation, 155,000 mu of straw checkerboard sand barriers, 145,000 mu of shrubbery, and 155,000 mu of developed shrubbery. These new straw checkerboards will increase the efficiency by 60% and reduce the cost by 10%. The service life of checkerboards has increased by up to six years from the previous three due to the new one's significantly higher strength compared to the manual construction. When the new 2.0 and 3.0 versions are ready, robots will take the place of all the workers currently needed to build the brush net rope straw checkerboards in the fields. The new checkerboards won't be blown away by the powerful windstorm after they've been constructed because the wind drag is minimal. 
Not only that, a mechanized program is devised to make a straw checkerboard. By using this method, workers no longer have to carry materials on their shoulders and work vigorously in intense heat. This significantly lowers production costs while increasing the efficiency of sand control operations and reducing worker intensity. Before the development of the new process, two employees could produce up to 3.6 MU or 0.24 acre of straw checkerboards in a single day. Issue of Overgrazing According to a survey, changes in temperature, overcrowding in agriculture, excessive water consumption, or overgrazing by cattle were the main reasons for desertification in China. Every year, the Gobi Desert alone devours 3.600 kilometers of grassland. Additionally, threatening to bury farms and infrastructure in the sand, desertification was limiting the region's ability to produce food. Beyond Ningxia, the effects were still being felt. Sandstorms were being affected in increasingly greater areas of northern China, while sediment from degraded land was streaming into the Yellow River, lowering water quality and raising the possibility of floods downstream. To tackle this, China sought the help of the World Bank in 2010. In return, the World Bank started a restoration project with techniques that improved desertification control while also boosting ecosystems' resilience by introducing a variety of native grasses and plants. Through the restoration of vegetation and the encouragement of natural regeneration, 32,351 hectares of damaged land were rehabilitated. In the project area, land degradation was reversed as evidenced by a 28 percentage point increased in vegetation cover, greater vegetation diversity, and improved soil quality due to the development of biocrust, a thin layer of lichens, cyan bacteria, arid land mosses, and microorganisms that aid in water and nutrient retention. Because of the increased plant cover, wind erosion was minimized, resulting in annual soil conservation of about 3,396 tons. Today, 3,800 hectares of cropland and 514 kilometers of rail and road infrastructure are protected by shelter belt plantings that were established on 2,455 hectares of land. Not only that, modern and effective corals are now available for farmers. Each coral receives its supply of food for livestock daily. This has greatly reduced the overgrazing issue. To overcome desertification, the most significant initiative has been the Three North Shelter Belt Forest Program, TNSFP, commonly known as the Great Green Wall of China. TNSFP intends to create a large green belt area in northern, northwest, and northeastern China, the three north regions, to stop the growth of the Gobi Desert. The program's primary goals are to prevent dust storms, reduce wind erosion, and ensure consistent agriculture and productivity. One of the biggest ecological conservation and restoration initiatives ever undertaken by a government is the TNSFP. The initiative was launched in 1978 and completion is slated for 2050. The next step for China is to focus on renewable sources of energy that can be obtained from the Gobi. Now you must be thinking, how is this possible? But don't forget, nothing is impossible for China. Let's take a look at the mind-blowing project of the China Windmill Project. The initiative is a component of the nation's plan to reach at least 1,200 GW of total wind and solar capacity. To achieve its sustainability goals, the Chinese government intends to construct 450 GW worth of renewable energy generating projects in the Gobi Desert and other land areas. This energy is twice the total amount of energy produced in the USA. The government intends to establish solar and wind energy installations in the area as part of this initiative. As China has already become successful in making windmills and solar cells at significantly lower costs than the USA, this project will be easy to go through. China aims to reach a 100% renewable source by 2030. Other countries, especially the U.S., should take inspiration from the work of China on desertification. According to NASA, there has been an increase in China's forests, and the desertification of Gobi has been slowed down with an improvement in climate change. The combined area of all the world's deserts grows by about the same amount each year as Ireland. Santiago, Chile's capital, is slowly being overtaken by the Atomica Desert. About 70 to 90 percent of the land of the Arabian Peninsula is at risk of desertification. In contrast, the Sahara in Africa has expanded by up to 10 percent over the past century and is still moving south. 
Though the U.S. is not facing desertification, it can utilize its four big deserts to some use by taking inspiration from China. This ends the video for today. What do you think should be done to reduce desertification? Tell us in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the world. See you in the next video.